Hallelujah and praise the Lord. This is Caleb Jones and this is Alpha Male 2.0, the podcast, freedom focused lifestyle design for men. Normally what I do for these podcasts, for any podcast or any audio presentation is I make kind of a rough outline. I just kind of write out a few bullet points and I like a blank word document and then I just go. I just read the bullet points and I can just go. That's usually all I need. Uh, I've been doing this stuff for a long time, so I don't need a lot of prep work. But this podcast, I'm going to try something different. For the first time ever, I'm just going to have, uh, I'm just going to speak completely extemporaneously with no outline, just a single idea. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how I do. You may have noticed the last few podcasts, I've tried different formats, and so I'm experimenting with lots of different things because I want to see what works the best for you guys. But anyway, I want to talk to you about your life, your entire life. And I have mentioned before in prior podcasts how One of the biggest reasons for my success and happiness that I have achieved in my life is because for most of my adult life, I have been 100% focused on five years in the future, five years ahead. So I'm constantly thinking about and focusing on the five year plus in the future version of me. So I am 48. And so I am thinking a lot about the 53 year old version of me. I want the 53 year old version of me to be very, very, very happy, happier even than me which is a tough job because I'm pretty fucking happy. And this is true when I was 30. I was thinking about the 35-year-old version of me. When I was 42, I was thinking about the, do the math, Caleb, 47-year-old version of me and so on. That's why my life gets demonstratively and extremely and noticeably better in just about every way every few years because I'm constantly focused on the guy in front of me. That doesn't mean I don't take any time for happiness today. Of course I do. I'm Black Dragon. I have sex with super hot chicks every week. I travel the world. I have a lot of fun. I enjoy my life a lot. But my focus is the five-year version of me, the five-year in the future version of me. So if I go back, if I do the opposite, and I go back and look at my adult life, actually, you know what? Let's go back all the way to the beginning. And I suggest you do this, especially if you're an older guy like me, but even if you're a younger guy, you look at each decade. So the first 10 years of my life were average. They were typical. I had a normal childhood. I didn't have a bad childhood. I didn't have a good childhood. It was a typical standard lower middle class childhood. It was fine. The second 10 years of my life, my teenage years, I think were again, reasonably normal, uh, reasonably average. I was weird or not weird, I should say. I guess I am weird, but lucky in that, um, or at least unique in that I didn't click into any one of those clicks in high school. So back when I went to high school a billion years ago in the late 1980s, Uh, I'm sure it works this way today, although the dynamics are slightly different. We had casts, we had the jocks, we had the nerds, and we had what we called stoners back then. I don't know what you call them now. You wouldn't call them emo now, but you know what I'm saying. Not stoners as in today, the, hey man, how's it going? It wasn't that kind of stoner. It was more like the bad kids who would wear the black jean jackets and smoke cigarettes, you know, do drugs and have sex, you know, the bad, they wear Ozzy Osbourne t-shirts and shit like that. So that, that's what we called the stoners back then. And uh, it was these three cliques. And I moved in between these three for some reason. So my favorite were the nerds because they were the funniest and they were smart and I could relate to them because I'm a smarter kid or I was a smarter guy. Still am a smarter guy. But anyway, you get my point. So I would talk to the nerds, hang out with the nerds. I also like computers. So they were fun. But I worked out with the jocks. I didn't go out for sports. I thought sports were stupid, but I would lift weights a lot. And so I would be down in the, uh, we had a basement in high school where you would lift weights and I'd be down there working out with the jocks. Now I didn't know any of them beyond working out with them because I didn't join the football team or that stuff. But this was despite the fact I looked like a stoner. So I had big giant 1980s rock star hair. I looked like Richard Marks from the 1980s. I had a big earring. I wore black leather jackets. And so that's what I would use that to go hang out with the stoners. And the reason I hung out with the stoners was because that's where all the hot girls were. Ah, see the popular girls, they were always, they looked like they were 12 years old to me. They were always really little with no hips and no ass and tiny boobs and flat chests. But you went out to the stoners, the bad kids, and there were the girls, the big blonde hair and the big asses, the big boobs, the big hips. I'm like, hell to the yes. So I would hang out with the stoners. So even though I looked like a stoner, I would work out with the uh, with the jocks. And this is one of the reasons I think that I wasn't really bullied in high school. A lot of kids were. I wasn't because I kind of navigated all three of these groups. I didn't do this on purpose, by the way. This is just how I did it. So I ended up with an adolescence that was, again, typical. Um, I did not lose my virginity until my early 20s. 
I went on lots of dates with girls toward the end in my high school year, and I, I did stuff, but I didn't have sex. The second decade of my life was, again, pretty typical. It was pretty normal. Not bad, not good, just kind of standard. Okay, so that brings me to my 20s. My 20s were amazing. They were fucking amazing. They were so exciting. This is when I finally started my own business. This is when I became a consultant. This is, I was making a six-figure income by the time I was 27. Um, they were great. They were so exciting and so fun. I worked really hard. I was very motivated. I was very happy. Um, that started to sap a little bit in my very late 20s, maybe 29, because as you know, when I was 25, I got married. And so that caused some complications. But those complications really didn't begin until I was in my late 20s, early 30s. So as a whole, my 20s were awesome, very exciting, very motivating. I accomplished some things I thought were pretty impressive. Um, I was working on projects that I thought were very fun. I was very excited, particularly in my early to mid 20s, very excited about computers. That's back when computers were cool. See, today computers aren't cool anymore because everybody has them and they don't really change. Every year, uh, the, new, the new laptop next year is going to be pretty similar to this laptop last year. But back in the 80s and early 90s, from about 1980, really 1979. So 1979 till about 1997-ish, 96-ish, computers were really exciting. Because every year, a new computer was radically different and radically new and so much faster. It was such an exciting time to be involved in that industry. And one of the reasons I actually stopped being a computer consultant many years ago is because it got boring because computers aren't cool anymore. But anyway, so that was, I was in the heat of all that during the 90s, uh, which was when I was in my 20s. So then that brings me to my 30s. So my 30s, I have to split in half. And sometimes you may have to do this as you look back on your life. You may not be able to separate your life into decades, nice and cleanly like I can. Uh, but my 30s, I had to separate into two pieces. I had my early 30s and I had my late 30s. Two very, very different times. My early 30s were bad. They were not good. I gained a lot of weight. I've talked about this before in many contexts, my books and my podcasts and, and blogs, where I lost my way. Um, I didn't know what my mission was. I didn't know why I was working. I didn't know why I was married. I didn't know why I had kids. I didn't know what I wanted to do in terms of my future. I'm just kind of floundering around. I suffered financially. My marriage suffered, gained a bunch of weight. It was not a good time until that fateful day at sometime around, I think it was 33, where I sat down at the park and wrote out my vision, wrote out my mission and did all that stuff. I've talked about that in other podcasts, in other contexts. Not going to go through that again. And that's when my life started to turn around. Uh, then in my mid thirties, I got divorced. Uh, went through a very bad recession. That was right when I was about 35 years old. And then I clicked over into my late 30s, so 35 to 39. My late 30s were fucking awesome. Now, when I say awesome, they were awesome with problems. <laughs> so my 20s were just awesome. My late 30s was really awesome, but with some flaws. That's when I went full bore Black Dragon. I started dating a lot, improving my woman life. I accomplished some things in my woman life. In my late 30s, I never thought I would ever accomplish in my life. It was incredible. At the beginning of that period of my late 30s, 35, 36, finances were a little weak, but they were very strong. By the time I ended my late 30s, I completely turned that around. I was motivated again. I was excited again. It was almost like my 20s, except I was getting laid with a lot of women. Didn't get laid a lot in my 20s. <laughs> I didn't lose my virginity until I was, I don't remember the exact age. It was either 22 or 23. I'll say 23. So it's not like I was getting laid a lot. And then I was married by 25. So it's not like I was getting laid very much in my 20s. I was really focused on my work. But in my late 30s, I could build a business, businesses, while also improving my woman life, building my alpha 2.0 life. That was very exciting, very motivating. Had a great, great time. Okay, so then the next decade is my 40s. I am 48, so I'm in my late 40s now. My 40s have been so amazing. They have been beyond even my 20s, beyond even my late 30s. My 40s have blown everything else away. My 40s have been so magical and so wonderful on literally every level, every level in every respect that I, I still have trouble believing it today. <laughs> um, I make more money now than I ever set any goals for. And I set some big financial goals for my life years ago, and I have far surpassed those goals in terms of my income. Not in terms of my net worth. That's where I think I'm a little weak, but I'll discuss that in a little bit. But in terms of my financial life, my business life, I have th done things that I never thought I would do. Uh, my woman life on a weekly basis is not only my wildest fantasies, it has, just like my financial life, has exceeded my wildest fantasies. I, I have said this before. If I went back in time 20 years, 20 years to the 20 years, so how old would see would that be? I'd be 28 years old. Yeah, I'm 48 now. So if I went back to the 28-year-old version of Caleb back in, you know, whatever that was, 
late 90s, early 2000s, whenever that was. And I sat down and I explained to him what my typical week was in my woman life, who I was having sex with, the women, the scenarios under which I was having sex. And I showed him detailed pictures of the women. He wouldn't believe a single word of it. He wouldn't believe it. He, he wouldn't. He would say, I'm sure I, you know, end up with hot, uh, uh, hot, attractive women. Not, oh, come on. You got to be, this is not going to happen. That's my normal day to day life. My woman life on a scale of one to 10 today is an 11. It is beyond my wildest fantasies. It's beyond anything I ever thought I could experience. And that's been my entire 40s. So my 40s have been goddamn good. So that means that in two years, I will enter into my 50s. And as always, I look at five years ahead. So my objective for my 50s is to make it even better than my 40s. That's going to be really hard <laughs> for two reasons. Number one, my 40s have been so goddamn good. So to, to, be, to exceed that in my 50s, that's going to be a chore. That's going to be not a chore. I don't, want, I don't view it as a chore. It's going to be an adventure. It's going to be a big project. That's the project I'm working on now. That's why I've been working so hard lately last year. I want my 50s to be even better than my 40s. Holy shit. Now, that's going to be hard for that reason. The other reason is just being older. I'm going to be in my 50s. And um, you, when you hit 40, for you younger guys, when you hit 40, uh, you start, your body starts to fight you a little bit. You start to notice little things in your body that it goes, nope, nope, not doing that. It's little stuff at first. And, and for me, it's still just little stuff. Like, for example, for me, when I was about, oh, some of my early 40s, I want to say 42, 43 years old, I was driving in my car and I made a lane change. So I turned and looked out the back rear uh, window, the back passenger seat. And I felt this like, eh, this like kink in my neck. My neck was like, eh. and it wouldn't turn as far as it used to turn. And I went, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I went, oh, I'm getting old. I got to start stretching. So today I do mobility stretching five, six, seven days a week. And so to combat that stuff, but that stuff's going to increase as I get older. Um, last year when I was 47, uh, I'm on TRT. I take TRT shots to maintain my testosterone level. That's one of the reasons I'm so happy and aggressive and fun and, and motivated and all this good stuff. My testosterone levels at age 48 are the equivalent of an 18 year old kid. An 18 year old man, very, very, very good. But um, I load these needles a few times a week when I do my shots, and they have these little numbers on them. So last year, it was 47. Yeah, that's right. Early last year is when this happened. Uh, the numbers on the syringe were blurry. And I'm like, what's wrong with this fucking syringe? Why do they have blurry numbers? What's going on? So I kind of blinked a little bit. And I said, oh, maybe I'm just tired. Sometimes, if, you know, if you're really sleepy, first thing in the morning, your eyes are a little blurry and you got to blink, you got to give it a little time, then you're, they focus again. So I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm, I'm like, no, I'm not tired. So then I take the syringe, I'm holding it in my hand, and I kind of push it away from me just a few inches, and suddenly the numbers snap into focus. And I went, wait a minute, I'm pushing things away, and they get into focus. Uh, that's what old people do. Holy shit, my eyesight is going. <laughs> and sure enough, I started to notice that when I held my cell phone, I'd have to push it away from my face an extra two inches to keep it in focus. God damn it. So I had to go to the optometrist and, you know, I don't wear glasses or anything, but I do wear reading glasses sometimes. This is a new thing in my life. And the optometrist said, hey, Caleb, you know, the good news is this didn't happen to you until you're 47. Most men, their eyes start going when they're 41. So dude, you're six years ahead of the game. You should be proud of yourself. That's great. And he's right. I didn't notice any problem until I was 47. So pretty damn good. So as usual, I'm aging pretty well. But one of the reasons it's going to be difficult or at least more difficult to make sure that my 50s are even better than my 40s is because I'm going to be in my 50s and that's pretty fucking old. I don't think 50s is old. Um, I know a lot of men and women in their 50s who I don't consider old. 60 is when I think you cross the old line. You cross from middle age into being old. So when you're in your 60s, yeah, you're old. <laughs> so I've got 12 more years before I'm actually old. But to be fair, regardless, 50s and 40s are two different things. And... um now, I'm doing everything I can to combat the aging process. I talk about anti-aging. I talk about some of my online courses, skin regimen. Um, I drink a lot of water. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't get drunk. I wear sunblock. Uh, I have good diet at least five, six days a week. Not seven days a week, but at least five, six days a week. I watch what I eat. I take a gigantic handful of vitamins. I'm on TRT. I get blood tests. I get all my lipid panel stuff done every year. So I'm paying very close attention to that stuff. So my 50s, getting older in my 50s, is not going to affect me as negatively as the typical Western guy who doesn't pay attention to any of these fucking things. 
but it will still be 10 years older. So that's my mission now. And if you were curious as to what objectives I have, matter of fact, uh, I'm about to do an AMA, a uh, video AMA, ask me anything. And it's possible that by the time this podcast is aired, I've already done this. But a lot of guys have asked me, what are your goals now, now that you're at this point in your life? What are your goals? Well, uh, I'll be super honest with you. I can't give you numbers, but I'll be honest. So I make a lot of money. My woman life is great, but my net worth is low in terms of what I think it should be. I mean, I, you might think it's high depending on how much money you have or don't have, but I think my net worth is very low compared to my age, compared to my uh, income history compared to where I think I should be. And so in the last few years, I have been scrambling to shovel money into my investments, into my net worth. The only reason I want to increase my income, because I make plenty of money in terms of annual income, but the only reason I want to increase it is so I can increase my net worth. And I don't actually have a net worth objective. I have a residual income goal. And as I've talked about many times before over the past several years, at age 53 is the age at which I click my mission into phase two. So I'm going to switch over my objectives from focusing on money and empire and move into my actualization phase where I instead focus on living in a way where I can just live and experience and be and give back if I want to and not worry about accumulating money. I will still work. I love working. I will never retire. Working is one of my greatest joys in life. But the objective of the work when I hit 53 or close to it is going to be a little different. Right now I work for the money. And I'll still make money post 53. Don't worry about that. But that won't be the objective. And I want to be at the point where my net worth and my residual income is high enough when I'm 53 that I can really not give a shit about money. And you could argue that I'm there or almost there. I wouldn't argue that. It really depends on your opinion of what a lot of money means. But that's my objective. My second objective is what I already said. I want to age very, very well. I have talked about how the Alpha Male 2.0 does not have the option that beta males and alpha male 1.0s have where they look pretty decent in their 20s and 30s. And when they get into their 40s, they start to look like shit. And by the time they're in their 50s, they look like a pile of shit. I know so many men like that. There are celebrities like that. I've been in my family who are like that. You may be this type of person, or you may know these types of people where when they were in their 20s and 30s, they were badass alpha males. They were good looking, dynamic, excited guys. And by the time you hit them and they're 55 years old, they're unrecognizable. They've let their entire body go. They've let their motivation go. Their testosterone's in the shitter. It's terrible. And as I've said many, many, many times, being happy in your 20s, 30s, and maybe early 40s, and being a miserable pile of shit when you're 55 plus is not success. That is not the point. Alpha Male 2.0 is about long-term, consistent happiness. Long-term happiness. Not just happy when you're 27 or 36 or 41 or 18. That's easy, or at least easier. I want you to be happy in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, and your 70s. Once you click over age 80, I don't have any easy answers. Alpha male 2.0 lifestyle models work to age 79. I have guys in their 70s living alpha male 2.0. It works. And I fully intend on being pure alpha 2.0 well into my 70s. Once you hit 80, really don't know, uh, the jury's out on that one. <laughs> I'll let you know when I turn 80. Now, the good news for that is when you view 80, you're viewing men who are 80 today. So uh, let's see, I'm 48. Let's do some math here. I'm 48. So that means I will be 80 in what? 32 years? Is that right? That can't be right. 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah. So in 32 years, I'll be 80, right? Right. So I can't compare myself to men who are 80 today, because as I've talked about often, medical technology is an IT technology, which I guess is redundant. It's an information technology, which means it's experiencing exponential growth curves. That means that by the time I am 80, in 32 years, I will look nothing like men who are 80 today. I will look far younger and be physically far younger because of medical technologies that will exist 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now that don't exist today. I talked about once on one of my blogs years ago where I was watching the movie Bridge on the River Kwai. Fantastic, fantastic movie. And in that movie was Alec Guinness, who was Obi-Wan Kenobi in the original Star Wars movies. And there's a scene, he's, he's an old, he's an old like British captain in that movie. And there's a scene where he's talking to his buddy and he's like leaning over this bridge and he's, you know, he's talking about how old he is and boy, I'm, you know, I, I'm an old man now and I don't have many years left. And he's talking about being old and he looks old. And I realized, 
I looked up his age. I went on IMDb, looked up his age when he filmed that scene. He was younger than I was at the time. He was 42 years old. I think at the time was 45 years old. Now I'm 48 years old. I don't look anywhere near as old as he did when he was 42 because this was a movie that was filmed in the 60s. So a man, 42 years old in his 40s, 30, 40 years ago was a very old motherfucker. So that's another reason why I'm very optimistic about my long-term life and why you should be too. And if you're younger than me, and statistically speaking, you are, because I know my audience, you're probably much younger than me. By the time you're 80, you're going to look pretty damn good unless you destroy yourself or allow your body to become destroyed by eating a bunch of horrible food, by getting drunk a lot, by doing a lot of drugs, and so on, smoking cigarettes and shit like that. That will fuck you. But if you don't do those things and you're reasonably healthy, the objective is to live as long as you can so that you can benefit from these new technologies. This is Ray Kurzweil 101. Ray Kurzweil's entire thing is survive as long as you can until they invent the technologies that can double and triple your lifespan and keep you young. Makes a lot of sense. So you can see how I focus on the macro in addition to the micro. I'm focused on the very big picture in terms of my life. And this is what I think it's a good idea for you to do. I think you should focus on the big picture. Focus on your life in terms of decades. If you're in your 20s, what is your life going to look like in your 30s, 40s, 50s? Why will you live? And this goes back to mission and goals. Now, I've said before, or at least I've started to say, if you're under the age of 30 and you have trouble figuring out your mission, don't worry about it. Forget about it. Wait till you're in your 30s and then figure it out. Once you're in your 30s, yep, time to figure out a mission. By the way, that's why you should determine a mission because I want you to take a long-term view of this stuff. Obviously, I'm taking a very long-term view. I'm in my 40s thinking about my 50s. I'm also thinking about my 60s. Not really thinking about my 70s yet, <laughs> but I'm definitely thinking about my 50s a lot. And I'm certainly thinking about my 60s. So I'm always thinking way ahead, certainly five years ahead, but also 10 and 15 years ahead. Always, 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 which is why with the one exception of my early 30s, my entire adult life has been awesome. It's been fantastic because I'm taking the long-term view of my life and you should take the long-term view of your life. It's a lot easier to accomplish big things for your life when you take the long-term view. And when you take the short-term view, of these things, you run into problems. The manosphere, the red pill world, the pickup artist world is full, and I'm not going to mention their names, but I could, there's five, six, seven of these guys off the top of my head, is full of content providers and gurus who lived a certain way, but only focused on the short term. What makes me happy now when I'm 27? What makes me happy now when I'm 32? And then they hit 35, they say, oh shit, now what do I do? I don't want to do this anymore. Sometimes they do this with women stuff. There are guys also on the internet, internet gurus, financial gurus who did this with money and business. They made a bunch of money in one area. They said, oh my God, this was terrible. I shouldn't have done this. I got to do this. I got to live like a monk now. And they do a complete 180. And they have all kinds of turmoil and midlife crises because they weren't thinking long term. They were just thinking about what do I want now or maybe in the next few years. I want you to think long term. I want you to look at your entire life as one big macro picture and design it from scratch. What do you want now? What do you want in five years? What do you think you'll want in 15 years? Now, it's a fair criticism to say, well, how the hell am I going to know what I want in 15 years? I promise you that in 15 years, you're generally going to want the same things. The details will certainly change. Absolutely. So I could say in 15 years, I'm going to want these things. And if they're big things, if they're core things, I'm sure I won't change my mind on them because I know myself. On the details, they will change. Yes, there are details about my life that are very different than I planned on 10, 15 years ago. But the macro stuff is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted location dependence. I wanted freedom. I wanted a freedom-based sexual lifestyle. I wanted to settle down, but in a freedom-based way, OLTR marriage. I wanted you know decent investments. I wanted multiple income streams. I wanted two very happy, healthy adult children, which is what I've got today. I wanted an international lifestyle, which is what I've got. So the big things I've got, the details are different. Yes, but the details, you're allowed to change those. That's part of life. <laughs> don't worry about that shit. Don't, and also that's the other thing. Don't get anal about this. Some guys will write out their ideal life in 10, 15, 20 years, and they, and they write it down to the fucking detail. That's not the way it works. Cover the macro stuff, the big stuff. You can be detail oriented within a time frame of five years. So you can say within five years, I want this. That's why I talk about your personal vision, which is if everything in your life was perfect three to five years from now, that you can map out in great detail. Beyond that, focus on the macro. And if you need help 
in terms of getting guidance for this, you can always look back, look back on your life. What are the things you did that you enjoyed? What are the things you accomplished and did well? What are the things that in your history you fucked up on or made you very unhappy? Let the past be a guide like I just went through with my life. I hope this has helped. I hope this is interesting. If you need more help with this, go to www.joinsmic.com and I will see you again in the next podcast. Have a good one. Bye.